Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and uh, never mind the Canadian Brexit deal. A Canadian actor has this week explained why Brexit is going to hit small exports to and consumers in the UK. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, William Shatner of Star Trek fame. Also, TJ Hooker a lot more entertaining but gets forgotten about these days, has been explaining how Brexit changes are going to stop him exporting his line of Star Trek goods from next year. And it's all to do with that. Now, this is particularly tragic and hilarious at the same time because VAT is one of those Brexit lies that gets told from time to time. Oh, we have such high VAT in this country because of the EU. They make us do it. Uh, no, no, no. VAT is set by individual member states. That's why it's different across different EU member states. Also, what VAT is and is not applied to is different across the EU. But what's comically tragic about this story is that it is VAT that is going to stop smaller exporters from exporting to the UK, as is the case with Captain Kirk there. After all, if the VAT rubbish were true, then surely post-Brexit VAT would be less of a constraint, not more. But no, the specific changes being brought in by Boris Johnson's Brexit government are, first of all, so instead of importers being liable for duty, the exporters will be responsible for ensuring that the VAT is collected and paid from a different country. That's not going to be straightforward. Now, I've imported things from small traders overseas before outside of the EU. You know, you get your notice from Royal Mail or whoever that duty is due. You trot along and pay for it or you pay for it over the phone and then you can collect your package or it'll be delivered to you. Now, what will have to happen is the exporter is going to need to deal with all that hassle themselves from outside the country where it all needs to be applied. The second change is, so currently there is a threshold of £15 before VAT becomes payable. That's been scrapped. So right now, if goods worth less than £15 are imported into the country, you don't bother with duty. Um, this is not going to be the case in a few months. So as a direct result of Boris Johnson's interpretation of Brexit, the VAT due on imported goods is going to go up and the additional hassle for exporters also massively increases. After all, at the moment, you don't really have to do much to export. You just send it. You may need to fill in something to say what's in your package, what it is, what value it is. That's it. That is it. It's quite, I mean, I've done that myself as well. You know, eBay, that sort of thing. And, and, this is someone exporting from America, we need to bear in mind as well. This is nothing to do with purely EU trade, though that too will be affected. And it's arguably a bigger problem for EU trade because the bulk of goods, of course, that we import is from the EU, just like the bulk of goods that we export is to the EU. Star Trek fans may have a different idea about which our most important market is. However, I get that. That's fine. But in reality, it's the EU. And what this represents to the UK as a direct result of Boris Johnson's Brexit is less choice for UK consumers because some traders will just not be able to trade with the UK anymore and higher prices because those who do will have to go, well, we're going to have to compensate here. We're going to have to put these prices up. Now, if you are someone who has been or is a customer of Mr Shatner, you will not be next year. He has said that he will not be able to sell to the UK. The rule changes stop it being worthwhile. He said that it would cost a thousand pounds a year just to file the forms, just just for the fees to file the forms to pay a company to sort that out. So just for the admin, nothing to do with sorting out the VAT as well, just the admin. So for small traders, that alone stops it being worthwhile if they don't want to or can't increase their prices to compensate. So we can expect a whole load of small traders around the world to stop selling to the UK. And this is where the EU now does become important because at the moment, you know, small traders can export to the UK without any hassle at all. There's no import duties, never mind any extra bureaucracy or anything like that. It's very, very straightforward and simple. Now they're going to have to deal with not only the payment, and, but also the administration of duties. 
not reasonable to expect small businesses like, you know, single person businesses to be able to do that. You know, they'll not, they'll just not export to the UK. They can't afford to. And you can think about it this way again. So there's going to be two sides to this. How does this impact UK exporters, but also people who export to the UK? So exporting to the UK, you just say, well, we can't export to the UK. So what do you lose? You lose one market. Now, for that business, that may be a large market or it may just be one country. Um, you know, that'll depend from business to business. But from the UK's point of view, that's going to hit every country that's not the UK. <laughs> um, Amazon have apparently stated that UK sellers who use their online marketplace are not going to be able to ship products between UK warehouses and the continent. If they want to be able to trade with the EU, they're going to have to have their products stocked in warehouses in the UK as well as in the EU already there. So it won't just hit UK cons consumers, but small UK exporters as well. So at a time when the government is actively encouraging you to build your own cottage industries, because, you know, they're quite close to making actual employment extinct, they are also knackering those small business owners. This is a party that says that it's on the side of the small business owner. Ironically, just as the UK are making our tax affairs more complex, the EU are simplifying them. I was reading the, this a uh, number of interesting things in an article in the Times, and and they they quoted an online retailer in the UK, saying that you know the UK side of it, even though the EU is simplifying their procedures, just the UK complexity is just going to mean they're going to have to cut trade with the EU. It's it's just not worth it for them. The same article noted with another uh, retailer, they were estimating it could cost up to £5,000 for every EU country they wanted to trade with. So again, you know, let's say you're an online retailer and maybe 50% of what you trade in line with generally in the country goes to the EU. Now, if that all goes to France, maybe you go, well, maybe if your business is large enough, maybe it's worth paying that fee to be able to export to France. But if it's not, if it's dotted around 5% here, 3% there and so on around the different EU member states, the cost will become prohibitively expensive. So and that's not just you saying, well, it's not worth it. We can't trade with the EU. That's also you saying we have to abandon half of our trade. That might knacker your whole business, your entire business. And it's important to remember that this is with or without a deal. These re retailers weren't talking about, oh, this is if there's no deal, if there is a deal, then we'll be OK. Without a deal, it's technically worse. It has to be worse because with a deal, if you're talking about a free trade agreement, of course, well, if we get a deal, we don't know what the nature of that deal would be. Let us say it's a free trade agreement, then at least the tariffs aren't going to be there. But the admin is still going to be there. You know, the, the VAT is still there. Um, even if you imagine a deal and online traders are saying that the complexity of the UK system and these VAT rules are enough to prevent them trading as they do now. From that point of view, the deal is irrelevant. Um, you know, they, they can't make those trades either way. So even if they're not waiting to see if Boris Johnson comes up with a deal, it doesn't matter if he comes up with a deal. It doesn't help them. And this isn't Brexit. It's really important to keep making this point. This isn't Brexit. There are some consequences of any form of Brexit. There are some things that would harm British competitiveness, regardless of how Brexit was pursued. But this, this is specifically a consequence of Boris Johnson's Brexit, or Dominic Cummings or Michael Gove's, doesn't matter. It was not inevitable to this extent. Like I said, Brexit was always going to hurt British competitiveness to some degree. Of course it was. There's a reason the EU is so stunningly successful. But it didn't have to inflict this much damage on us. This is as a result of UK government rules. Nothing to do with the EU. Nothing even to do with the World Trade Organization. This is UK government rules. The UK government deciding to change VAT rules to make it more expensive to export to the UK and to make it much more expensive to export from the UK to anywhere else anywhere. But anyway, there we go. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, 
I'll see you later.